the 60th anniversary weekend of 8th Avenue First Assembly, which was held the weekend of April 21st to 23rd, 1989. Anniversaries are special events, not only because they mark important milestones in our history, but because they also give us an indication of what may be in store for the future. My name is David Peterson, and this is Ron Tooth, and together it was our privilege to have chaired this great weekend along with a host of very enthusiastic volunteers and a dedicated organizing committee. Memories. What great gifts from God. And now that the 60th anniversary celebration is over, we can now add it to our own collection of fond memories. The weekend celebration w was just a huge success and a blessing to many, many people. The church today continues to receive thank you cards and letters of appreciation from all over North America. We pray that this videotape will serve as a further reminder to you of all the times and the memories that God has given to us and the wonderful people that he has brought into our lives. We are sure you will enjoy every minute of it. The old 8th Avenue Church and now today First Assembly have provided memories for thousands of people over the last 60 years. In this video, we've tried to gather a few of these memories together and with the help of more than 300 people have collected these. It is, it is our desire that this video will serve as a, re as a memory to you and as a result be a, a, a blessing to you. Now David, let's look at some of these activities that were held this 60th anniversary celebration weekend. Activities that today are now precious memories. We opened with the welcome rally on the Friday night. And what a great service it was. It was exciting. Registration was set from 6.30 to 7.30. But by 5.30, the church was already beginning to fill with out-of-town guests. By 7 o'clock, the foyer and sanctuary were filled with people embracing and hugging one another, old acquaintances, friends, and family. The service began at 7.30 and was held here at First Assembly. And the same spirit that was evidenced prior to the service continued throughout the entire service.
saw a whole lot of people greeting one another, and maybe there's somebody you missed. But I want you to take about a minute and just greet some folks around to someone you haven't seen for at least 22 years.
20 of, of the former uh, pastors, staff members who have been with the church over the years. And uh, I want to just present to you some of the former senior pastors and their wives, and we want to make a, a presentation to them. Helping me make the presentation this evening is our, our two of our young people. Uh, they're active in our church. Both of them are third generation, uh, 8th Avenue and First Assembly uh, young people. And I'm going to ask uh, Sherry Megacy and Jim Abraham if you will come with your presentations. And uh, as we began to phone some of the pastors who have ministered here over the years, you know what's coming. We're going to make them wear them all weekend. <laughs> I was so glad to be able to put a call through to brother and sister John Watts. They served the congregation from 1949 right through to 1962. They're presently living in the city of Vancouver, and uh, we want to honor you tonight. Brother Watts, would you come, please? And uh, sister Watts, would you come, please? Would you honor them? Served for a short time as the interim senior pastor in 1970. 
served this congregation as an interim senior pastor from 1981 to 1982, and uh, uh, he hails from Winnipeg these days. I want you to uh, give him a hand.
How many know it's not good enough to look at the past unless it has an impact upon the future? And we are going to look into something that's been, and it's going to affect what's coming. And I want us all to have that anticipation right now in our spirits that this is a prophetic weekend, which means it is a weekend which will speak into the future of this body. Now this is a little one-liner, and I'm going to use it, and some of you will get it, the youth will understand it right away. Here it is. If we are not tomorrow, today, we're history. <laughs> we're done. If we're not tomorrow, today, we're history. And I heard a man say that the church is the mystery on planet Earth. And I love confusing the world, don't you? We have been called to be the number one mystery on planet Earth, not Hollywood, but the church of Jesus Christ. And as we touch the world, it will be touched because we are people who are looking into the future, but thanking Almighty God for our past. Now, we're going to have a good time affecting our future. You did a great job, man. I am so courageous. I saw you Wearing my hat, how about that? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I did. There I am. Well, he's around somewhere. He'll be coming in. Oh, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No, I saw it, but I just knew I remember. Yeah, you remember the face. I have a son. Hi. I always come up wherever I go.
afternoon. A strawberry tea was held here at First Assembly in the Christian Education Wing. Numerous pictorial displays were, were set up and people had an opportunity to view all these pictures and renew acquaintances. Two features were held this same afternoon. Former faces of first as well as musical memories. Both of these features, which you're now going to see, were, were absolutely phenomenal.
church was in 1959. We went to hear the couriers. How many remember the couriers when they came through? They blessed our hearts. One of the songs that's blessed my heart. It's an old song. Claude, I don't even know if you were born. <laughs> you, you can see how excited we are to be here. We all dressed up today. <laughs> the joy of knowing Jesus. Saturday afternoon presentation, we will be now going down to the Palliser Hotel where the great celebration banquet was held in the Crystal Ballroom at 6 p.m. The title of the banquet was Your Moment in Time.
tonight we warmly welcome you here, our many friends from far and near. And the Museum of Memories will open to you. We trust you'll be gladdened by more than a few. What pride to me and to you, a world of faith to see each of us through. Many friends to keep and his love to stay, as well as God's peace and comfort all the way. So a very unique evening we want this to be, a night of remembering of history. For each one get, gathered here, we've not walked alone. Our greatest days may yet be unknown. To God be the glory, through him we did gain. He brought the increase, yet not without pain. And this is our moment in time, when First Assembly looks back to see the loving, faithful hand of God. Without it, where would we be? We are sharing this special moment in time, possibly with a tear, maybe a giggle or two. So greet, old friends, pass along a hug, show his love in our lives, it's the best we can do. Then sit back, relax, enjoy friends at your table, put names to faces if you are able, laugh at a reminder, enjoy an old song, add, add another, another memory to take along. Thank you, Donna Coop.
throughout $45. Elbow Park Bungalow Sacrifice, six room bungalow, maple floors, hot water heating, fireplace, garage, and more, $7,500. <laughs> That's a realtor, I'll guarantee you. As we move through the paper, we come to the church section. Pentecostal Assembly, April 23rd, which happens to be 60 years tomorrow. The pastor was Reverend J. McAllister, Hugh J. McAllister, pastor. Orchestra director, Mr. Stanley Newby. Pianist, Mr. Howard Gay. Even if you were a pianist in the church, you got your name in the paper. <laughs> and the topic for that Sunday night was sliding into hell. <laughs> Two years later, I actually started steady Sunday school. Of course, in those days, we had to walk because there was no car fare, no cars in those days. And until I was about 10, Mom thought I was too young to walk four times on Sunday. So uh, I started when I was about 10 years old. And that's about 60 years ago. Isn't that terrific? Great. And the last Sunday night of uh, the clear scratch before he left for China, I was baptized in water. <laughs>
Tuesday, May 9th, 1933. New setback for farmers in Alberta. Rain turns to snow, expect reduction, wheat acreage, facing latest seeding period in the history. May 4th, 1935. Social credit controversy stirs correspondence. New economic theory rouses varied views. My favorite soloist here tonight, somebody who used to sing in the 8th Avenue Church and on the radio broadcasts. Esther Gerdes, Nee Hemkes, my aunt from California. I'm 
church in the 30s and 40s. Could you please stand just, uh, just for a minute? Give us... And as the house lights come up, 30s and 40s. There has to be some over here. I know there has to be some. and Donna, let's do a duo. We've got a missionary here and uh, Florence L. Uh, Donna, maybe you can just uh, reminisce a little bit. Give us one of your fondest memories from 8th Avenue. I could tell lots of them, Jimmy Moore and Bobby Taylor, but I won't. Uh, they were the bad boys. <laughs> I guess I can remember a crusade with Christian Hout when I was about eight years old, and that was when I accepted the Lord. And I also remember one Sunday afternoon we used to go to nursing homes, the young people, and uh, we were singing and sharing God's love. We went back to the church after and always had a prayer time, and it was a Sunday afternoon that Eleanor Baker prayed with me, and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was a wonderful time, and I have many fond memories of our grandparents and our marriage and bringing our children in that church, and God has been so good and so faithful. And Florence, I'm sure you have a fond memory. I think my memories are of the people who loved us and who gave us guidance. I think of Mrs. Watts, who was especially kind, and I also think of Mrs. Garden. Mrs. Garden and Mr. Garden were like parents to us. As most of you know, we were raised by our grandparents, and we needed parents, and they were. And I always wanted to pattern myself after Mrs. Garden because I loved the way she did things. And I, I to this day, look on Mrs. Garden as mom. Amen. Isn't that terrific? Great. Special lady, every Friday night, the young people used to barrel out of church and go up to Sister Doris Larson's home. And first thing we used to do, oh, we were terrible. We went in her fridge and just took all her food. What is your fondest memories of eight days? Believe it or not, I think of those days many times when we were able to share our home with our friends, our young friends, and the friends of our daughter, Rhonda. I'm sorry she couldn't be here tonight to share this time that I'm having meeting you all. There are many, many share, uh, memories that go way back, but that's one first. Thank you, Doris. <laughs> I was 
ask them to sing a duet. Guess what? The bomb of the <laughs> CFCN for our 35 years. Morris Archard, our radio technician, who couldn't handle distractions, had his taping equipment spread all across the communion table. Reverend Lucas, John Lucas, was at the piano looking saintly. <laughs> he was filling in for Dan Megacy. Uh, Dan was either in Hawaii or shopping. <laughs> Myrtle Tigard, now Mrs. Bud Tooth, was at the piano laying holy hands on the ivories. And our large sanctuary choir was on the platform under the direction of Bob Swaffield. We were approximately halfway through our program, half hour program, Songs in the Night, and we had arrived at prayer time. A very, very meaningful moment in Songs in the Night. It was that moment when I reached out in prayer on behalf of our listening audience, praying that God would touch as many hearts as possible. As usual, the choir had sung the first verse and the chorus of our prayer hymn and were now softly humming in the background while I prayed. My intention was to pray, O oh Lord, move tonight in hotels, motels, and rest homes. I, I don't know if it was a, a slip of the tongue <laughs> or some particular urge which I have for you. But I pray with deep feeling, oh Lord, move tonight in hotels, motels, and restrooms. <laughs> Our 
kids, we just moved from Edmonton, our kids were sick, and so my wife and I were coming separately to church for about six weeks. When we came as a family, it was a Sunday that Pastor Davis resigned, and we often wondered if we were responsible. <laughs> I would, I would like to say that uh, when we came to First Sem uh, to Eighth Avenue, uh, I really appreciate. I have to give a um, a word of praise to the Dicks. They made us feel really welcome in Calgary, and we just uh, we were shopping around for churches. But uh, when they when the Dicks and and uh, you know a few other people uh, invited us over, and then we went to. Uh, a barbecue, we just felt that uh, they were just a friendly bunch and we've stayed since. Great, thank you very much. I take that with you. And I don't know how many of you can remember Louise Nankable. She came to speak and she spoke with sackcloth. And, and at that time, I was playing the organ. And by the way, I wasn't in Hawaii or shopping. I was having, I was having a baby. That's <laughs> And then she'd make a grand entry, and I had to play only believe, only believe, only believe, and then she'd come in, right? And she'd come in. And we played, and we played, and we played, and we played, and no Louise showed up. And so the pastor's looking around, and we're all looking around, wondering, where is Louise Nankalo? Well, Austin was head usher at that time, and he thought, I better go check this out. So if you can remember where the old kitchen was, way in the back, she had gotten in there somehow and was praying and, and couldn't get out. She was locked in. And so they had to take a knife and pry her out. And they got her out and finally she came out. And to this day, I have a very difficult time playing only <laughs> For just a moment. Uh, oh boy, it's bright up here. Where I met the Lord when he filled my life was downstairs in that same old prayer room. And I went down there and I said, Lord, I really want to be filled right now. And then a lady came up and started praying behind me. And I said, Lord, not her. <laughs> but the Lord has a real sense of humor. I married her daughter. <laughs>
Moore needs to have Brother Burns check his eyes if he thinks I haven't changed since 1967. I uh, was supposed to tell some poignant memory, and I have one very much like Pastor Davis's. Uh, I was doing a Bible study on the uh, se uh, second book of Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And for those of you who use all of those other diversions these days, I need to give you the background. <laughs> the uh, tried and true King James used to say, if the earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building eternal in the heavens, a house not made with hands. So the subject that night was immortality. And usually when I was teaching on Tuesday night, George Hislop used to fall asleep. <laughs> Sometimes it's a slip of the lip, and I was getting warmed up on immortality and how we all long to be changed from this body to this humiliation. And I wham the pulpit and I said, There isn't a normal Christian anywhere that doesn't frequently yearn to be clothed upon with immorality. <laughs> and George Hissa woke right up. I thought his head was going to snap off. And Jack Garden sounded like his iron lung was shaking. I went, <laughs> That's my greatest memory from those days.
knew it. <laughs> you know what memories we have, I'm telling you. We can talk about the first CA convention that ever was held by the Pentecostals in any part of Canada to attain to the number that we had when first assembly, then 8th Avenue hosted us in the Jubilee Auditorium. And we filled it. And they said it couldn't be done by humble Pentecostals. But you did it. And then we went back there once, you remember? After the 50 days of revival with Marvin Schmidt, those seven weeks that we heard so much about, and those were days of revival. <laughs> I'll tell you, if you ever saw the fire burning, you saw it burning in those days. Because people slain all around the altar and up and down the aisles and people being healed and filled with the Spirit. And all sorts of wonderful things were taking place because God was moving. But really it was because people were praying. There had been those Tuesday morning prayer meetings, those all night prayer meetings, and they had been going on from way back in 8th Avenue and way back in that, was it 14th Street? But God still answers prayer and revival came. And we didn't like everything that happened. And I think God likes it to see that kind of takes a starch right out of us. You remember the night that Marvin Schmidt put his hand on me and I fell down? <laughs> Only it wasn't on the floor, it was on the organ. <laughs> and the organ. <laughs> that was a terrible place because I was up above everybody on the floor, at least I was out of sight, but I was on the organ. <laughs> oh, that was so embarrassing and I was praying in tongues like, actually, who he doesn't. But God didn't move me. <laughs> and I couldn't roll up. So he went ahead and he laid hands on a few other people and they fell under the power and, and then I, I got up. And he noticed. And he came over and he said, in Jesus' name. And I just kept going down every time he did it. <laughs> but the, the puppet that I had, Gregory, so many of you said, have you still got your puppet, the, the ventriloquist dummy? And I want you to know, I did bring him to Calgary with me. But I'm not going to use him because a young boy that I dedicated as a child from Three Hills in the Drum Color Church years ago, phoned me two months ago and said, uh, Reverend Brian, do you still have that dummy? And I said, yes. He said, well, how can I get one? I said, ask for it. He said, you, you give it to me? I said, sure, why? He said, well, I'm in children's work and, and I need something like that. So I'm out of children's work, but the little dummy was passed over up there to him uh, Friday morning so the dummy lives on for children in Jesus. When I look across this room, probably some of the dearest people on the whole place of the earth are gathered here. Uh, friends of ours that have become so close and friends that have moved here from other parts of the country. And when we were uh, introducing or being introduced to people from across the country, I began to think about how many lives have been touched by this church because they've sent out people from one way or the other, either to the mission field or else because they've been touched here and moved somewhere else. So the work of First Assembly is pretty much worldwide. Um, by the way, I was going to try and find the pants that match Dave's jacket to go with this, but I, I must have thrown them up. <laughs> Uh, in the 70s, it was about the first time that I remember we started singing with using uh, soundtrack. And the one I'm going to sing tonight is uh, the very first soundtrack I ever purchased. And uh, when I got home, I thought, now this doesn't sound exactly right. And I looked on the patch and it says, for low voice. So uh, if any of you know me, you know I don't have a low voice, but you'll bear with me as I sing this. It's called, Oh Glorious Love.
Oh, amazing truth to ponder. He whom angel hosts attend, heir of him, God somewhat wonder. kids came to First Assembly in 1970, July. I came as a 35-year-old, 10 years on the mission field, still pretty naive and uh, having some difficulties with adjusting to the culture of the Canadian way of life. I remember it's the first impressions that kind of stick with you. I, sitting up on the platform there and looking out over the congregation and seeing people like Nora Doctrum and and uh, Molly Moore and Grace Hanley with big smiles on their faces now. Boy, those people are really, they're enjoying the service and everything else. And, uh, you know, each week I would see them along with other members of the WM. And I discovered why they had a smile on their face when one day I had a sock shower and uh, all kinds of socks started coming into the office and some through the mail and you name it. You see, I, I came from the West Indies where they really don't mind color. So I used to come to church on Sundays with, uh, with purple socks. And so I want you to know they're black. But uh, I used to come with multicolored socks. So the ladies used to get a real jolt out of this. Uh, incidentally, ladies, I've just worn out the last pair. We want to take up another soft shower. I appreciate it so much. Another thing that seems to tie in with the feet was, uh, of course, I had been out west, gone to the West Indies, coming back again. My brother said, hey, you're going to Calgary. That's Cowtown. You need a pair of cowboy boots. So my brother gave me a sharp, sharp pair of expensive cowboy boots. So it was one of those Sundays in there, Pastor Keys came with cowboy boots. My pants were not tucked into the boots, incidentally. And uh, I noticed a few chuckles, and I'm not quite sure how the board got the message across to me that the senior pastor does not wear cowboy boots. You only wear cowboy boots when you're out in the barnyard shoveling that stuff. So after that, I only wore them on occasions to the board meetings. <laughs> it's a great church. One of the greatest. Well, I feel it's the greatest, but I have to be careful because I'm district superintendent. I'm very prejudiced, very biased. I love you. God bless you. Thank you.
first assembly, we still believe in miracles. Imagine expecting to hold the preachers to two minutes each. <laughs> well, I'm going to try to be as true as I can to my time limit, so I'm going to do as Pastor Watts did, and just use notes if I may. And uh, I was just thinking, what a wonderful weekend this has been. We have stopped to look back, not looking for the best days, but uh, because they're still to come. But uh, looking at the good days, and I think we look back over many ordinary days. Uh, ordinary services where the choir hardly did some, and the preacher did less, at least maybe this preacher. And uh, the band, well I could tell you the story about the band, but I'm not going to. We also remember the high watermarks where God did sovereignly and faithfully move into our midst. Jill's and my contribution to the life of this assembly, in our estimation, was but an interval. We came to Calgary really not expecting what would follow, certainly not uh, expecting to be interim pastor, uh, nor the host of Pentecost Presents, can you imagine? But uh, the circumstances unfolded, and it was clear what we ought to do. And uh, when God has told you what you ought to do, He's already told you what you can do. And so we did what we could with all our heart and our soul and our mind. And uh, I remember writing in my journal at the conclusion of my interim stationing that in youth ministry I'd always felt that I was 29 going on 18. And... Uh, now I wrote, I feel like I'm 29 going on 40. And uh, that fact was reinforced shortly after I got back to Winnipeg when I overheard Pastor Barber say, uh, Michalski was away for three years and he's grew eight. He's grown eight. And I uh, didn't know whether he was complimenting me on maturing or accusing you folks of wearing me out. <laughs> no, this is your mandate and it will be your expression and your experience till Jesus comes. Amen.
one little surprise for you right after prayer. Pastor Bob, will you just lead us in a word of prayer? Amen. Amen. Let's just bow our heads in a moment of reverence to the Lord. Let's just take a moment to reflect before we pray. There's been a lot of wonderful joy, and I know the Lord has celebrated with us. But let's take a moment to take what's happened tonight and as the first message of this anniversary, let it be a moment in our life right now. What is God speaking to us through what He's done in the past? What's God saying through to us even tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to ask you just for a few moments before we pray, just for a couple moments, would you just begin to quietly begin to give praise to the Lord? Just across this whole auditorium. Let's begin to praise the Lord. You might want to just slip a hand up and praise the Lord for a moment. Let's just give Him praise tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You've been so good to us, Lord. All through these years, Lord, Your faithfulness. Your faithfulness, Lord, oh God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We thank You, Lord, tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight, Lord, oh God, we feel almost like you've been at a wedding, Lord. It's been like, Lord, a time of celebration. Lord, we know that you are preparing a bride. And Lord, the church is your bride. And Lord, oh God, there's been flaws and there's been weaknesses. But, Lord, you are perfecting us, Lord, that we might be presented to you without spot or wrinkle. Lord, we believe that day is approaching quickly. Lord, when you will call the bride unto yourself. And we pray that first assembly may be pure. Lord, that we might be spotless. That we might be adorned, Lord, oh God, not that we would be arrogant or proud, but that we might have gifts to lay before your feet, crowns to cast before you. Lord, oh God, you've blessed us with so much. You've blessed us with the power of your word and preachers who've preached your word and the gifts of the Spirit, Lord, how you've moved in our midst over the years. Lord, because you're preparing a bride. Lord, I pray that even now tonight, Lord, oh God, we might be conscious, Lord, of our moment tonight in time. That, Lord, oh God, you have called this church to change the destiny of this city to have an impact upon this city, Lord, O oh God. And we pray that, Lord, O oh God, even now in our hearts, we would renew, Lord, our commitment to prayer. Yes. We would renew, Lord, our commitment to the foundation by which this church has been established and has gone forward. And, Lord, that the altars again will be filled many, many times until you come with souls coming to seek you. Lord, souls that are coming to become right with Jesus and to accept you as their Savior. Lord, O oh God, we pray your blessing to be upon us now as we go. Lord, O oh God, that we would be mindful, Lord, of your faithfulness to us. And by faith, Lord, O oh God, we would stand together, united, Lord, in your presence, that, Lord, this church will have its greatest days still before it. Should Jesus tarry, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Sunday morning worship service was held at the Jack Singer Concert Hall, which is part of the Center for Performing Arts, downtown Calgary. The service was conducted by Reverend Ken Bombay, and the music was led by Pastor Blaine Eagle. Let's go in and have a look now at the morning worship service. <laughs>
rings with freshness. Today it rings with immediacy. Today it speaks of probability and possibility. Today it intimates fulfillment and, and fullness of time. Today's the day. Today, if you will hear his voice. Listen to these immortal words from the Sanskrit. Look to this day, where it is light, the very light of light. In its brief course by all the varieties and the realities of your existence. The bliss of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day. Such is the salutation of the dawn. Service. We enjoyed a fabulous Sunday brunch back at the Palliser Hotel in the Crystal Ball Room. This was followed at 2.30 p.m. by the great final citywide rally, which will feature Mark Cole leading the worship and Reverend Jack Keyes presenting a challenge for the future.
you, Alvin, and the choir for your beautiful ministry over this weekend. May I just make a personal comment? As you look up here on the platform, you see a number of pastors, men of God who have been led of God to be pastors of this assembly at one time or another through its history. I believe with all my heart that it is God who gives to the church the gifts. That sometimes the pastor will be a pastor evangelist, such as I was, and there will be a pastor teacher, and perhaps the next pastor will be a pastor evangelist because there needs to be that blending and that emphasis there. We, we can't just be um, taught, There's, it's got to be put into practice, and so God knows his church, and so he prepares individuals to give leadership within the assembly. When a pastor comes in, he has his ideas and concepts of what he would like to see accomplished in the years that God will give him with that congregation and in that church, and so he works hard to see his vision fulfilled. Then he moves on. The next man comes in. And he, have a, he has a vision and it may be completely different from what this man had. Pastors come and pastors go. But there are unsung heroes in our assemblies that I admire and I look up to, believe it or not. That's the deacon boards. I joke with them because they joke with me, but I love them. There must be someone within your assembly that will give uh, continuity, will keep the ship on even keel, keep things on track. And those men are men of God, elected by the congregation that we would hope and pray had already prayed through who should be representing them in the leadership role. And those men that give leadership as the deacon board are men of God, just as godly as any man seated on this platform today. I trust that this presentation has brought you not only a memory of the blessings of our 60th anniversary weekend, but that, is, that it has brought you a fresh sense of blessing as we have remembered our 60 years together. Our past, well, it's been a past of a church with a heart to reach our city for Christ. Our vision for the future, it's not much different. It's really a vision to reach our city through church planting, through the strengthening of other churches in our city, through expanding our own base that we might adequately reach our city for Jesus. As we come to the close of this video presentation, could I ask you to do one thing? Could I ask you just to take a moment to pray for First Assembly? As we move into a new era of our life and ministry under the Lord, could I ask that you would ask God to give us the strength and the endurance to fulfill the vision that the Lord has for us? Could I ask you to pray that we would realize fully the purposes of the Lord for the years that lie ahead of First Assembly? Thank you for doing that. Thank you for joining us over this past weekend. The Lord bless you. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.
Those men that give leadership as the deacon board are men of God, just as godly as any man seated on this platform today. And when I trust that this presentation has brought you not only a memory of the blessings of our 60th anniversary weekend, but that, is, that it has brought you a fresh sense of blessing as we have remembered our 60 years together. Our past, well, it's been a past of a church with a heart to reach our city for Christ. Our vision for the future, it's not much different. It's really a vision to reach our city through church planting, through the strengthening of other churches in our city, through expanding our own base that we might adequately reach our city for Jesus. As we come to the close of this video presentation, could I ask you to do one thing? Could I ask you just to take a moment to pray for First Assembly? As we move into a new era of our life and ministry under the Lord, could I ask that you would ask God to give us the strength and the endurance to fulfill the vision that the Lord has for us? Could I ask you to pray that we would realize fully the purposes of the Lord for the years that lie ahead of First Assembly? Thank you for doing that. Thank you for joining us over this past weekend. The Lord bless you. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.